Okay, so now I'm going to look at Microsoft Visual Studio Code. I mostly just refer to it as Visual Studio Code, but it's important to like understand the mechanics and interest of where these tools come from and how they're being made. So this is a, a put out by Microsoft. I've already downloaded here. This is a fresh user account on this machine. So there should, there's nothing installed or configured. So I'm doing all of this from scratch, but I did already download it. All you need to go need to do if you want to use, try using Visual Studio Code is to go to the Visual Studio Code website. Once you've downloaded it, then you can uh, go ahead and run it. And here it is. Uh, when you first run it, oh, it's gonna send me through a different browser to some getting started page, which I, you, you could look at. And by the way, ah, in the last video, I called them plugins. They're called extensions. So these you can see are the various extensions you can, um, you can uh, install. I'm gonna quit out of here. And you see it's giving us a little welcome message. Um, I can uncheck this because maybe I don't wanna see the welcome message anymore. So now that I have Visual Studio Code open, the first thing I wanna show you is just, I can make a new file and I'm gonna hit Command S for save, and I'm just gonna uh, put this on the desktop, and I'm gonna say, uh, like as if I'm gonna write a P5 sketch, I'm gonna say sketch.js, and then I'm gonna say like function setup. Ah, it's so tiny, I can't see it, can you see it, it's so tiny. Function draw. So here's the thing, immediately you might see, okay, well I, my eyesight is not this, Good, I wanna make the font size bigger. I don't like this color scheme. I wanna change the color scheme. Most of these things can be done through the preferences. So if I go up to code, uh, preferences, and then settings. Now there's extensions again, which I'm gonna talk about. And oh, this looks actually different than the last time I used it. <laughs> but you can see here, editor font size. So one thing I wanna do is I'm just going to change this to 36 and hit enter and I'm gonna hit close, and we can see now I have a much bigger font size. Now you can also actually change all of the settings in a secret JSON file, it's not so secret. I have to figure out how to find that. <laughs> because that's how I used to do it, but this is a new feature. So where do I find that? Whoops, um, let's look for it. Preferences, settings, let's go back to settings. Let's see if I can change that, show, oh, there we go, open settings.json. <laughs> and you can see, this is actually where all the settings are. They're, you, they're actually all just here in this big JSON file, and then I need more room to be able to see all this stuff. You can see here, now I have user settings. I can just put extra things that are overwritten there. So it, maybe I just wanna use the, the GUI. So I'm gonna close this. I encourage you to look through this. Oh, 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 here we go. Tab size, the number of spaces a tab. No, 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 two spaces. <laughs> and I don't want them to be tabs, I want them to be spaces. But I, I'm not gonna worry about that. You should use four, you should use three. Blow, blow people's mind, use three space tabs, whoa. Don't worry about this sort of stuff too much, okay. So that's really important. Um, and you, you know, I could, I could probably, this video could be like 10 hours long showing all the customization stuff. I don't use too much of that, frankly. Um, okay, the other thing that's really useful, which was if I close this out, which is right here, is show all commands. So I'm gonna show you a command that you can run that I love. So one thing that I often really like to do, like here I am, I'm gonna be showing you more about iTerm in a bit, but one thing that I like to do, I'm gonna go CD, which is change directory, go to the desktop, and then I'm gonna type LS for list. Look, there's this sketch.js file. I'm working in terminal, and what I wanna do is I wanna open that file and I wanna edit it in Visual Studio Code. Well, I could go to Visual Studio Code, and I could do Command O, and I could find it, but something that I like to do very often is actually type a command like this, code sketch.js, and <gasps> command not found. So, this is something that Visual Studio Code has available for you, and the easiest way to find it is by saying shift command P, shift command P, then I'm gonna, it's right, because I looked for it earlier, recently used, but what you're gonna wanna do is type S H E. S-H-E-L-L, -L. I'm gonna zoom in here, and you're gonna see shell command install code. You don't wanna uninstall, you wanna install. So this installs the code command in path. Path, I'm just gonna write down the word path. More important than what you're using for any of this stuff is how your computer finds what you're using. 
and your computer finds what you're using through this like variable that's just sitting in your computer's guts called path where it's keeping track of all these directories where it needs to find stuff. So this is actually a really important concept and will come up again and again throughout these tools. Um, all right, so now let's do install code command in path. Uh, it's going to need admin privileges. This is a temporary account with no password. It did it. Now, interestingly enough, I, in theory, it shouldn't work now. I hope it doesn't work. Oh, it did work. So you know what? Visual, sometimes when you install something new to the path, your terminal, your console, your shell hasn't reloaded the new path. So you'd have to like quit and restart again, but it did happen to work. So now anywhere I am on this computer, I could just type code. I could do like CD uh, documents and I could say code and I could say code dot. And now it's actually opening up my documents folder in Visual Studio Code. Now there's nothing in the documents folder. It would be nice if I put some stuff on this machine, but if you're in a directory, you can open up the whole thing. So the other thing that I like to do is use extensions. So let's find those. Again, I barely use this program. So uh, this is extensions here. So uh, there's so many uh, different kinds of extensions for Git and different languages and syntax island and everybody has their favorites, but ha, here's one that I love, Beautify. Beautify code in place for VS Code. So let's try to install that. JS Beautify for VS Code. Did it install? I think so. Sometimes you have to hit reload to like make sure it like actually loads. So then I should be able to go back here and I should be able to do things like, so, oops, whoa. Oh, there's a, has a lot of autocomplete stuff, which I haven't necessarily gotten my handle on. Um, and I'm going to do things with weird, uh, weird indentation. It's, it's like making me crazy. I can barely look at it. So what if what I want to do is beautify this code? So I have the package installed. Is it maybe, a, is there a built-in keyboard shortcut with this package? I don't actually know, Command B? No, Command B does something else. So I think I need to find the key mappings or the settings. So let's go back to preferences, extensions, beautify, and then here, let's, let's look through the documentation. There are some settings that you can change. Um, and I think keyboard shortcut, that's what I'm looking for. Ah, use the following to embed a beautify shortcut in keybindings.json. So I can actually take this here, copy it. Now I want to go into go view, somewhere is the keybindings file, <laughs> preferences, keyboard shortcuts. Maybe that's it. Oh yes, here we go, I found it already. Okay, look, so you can see these are all the key bindings and you can actually edit them and change them, but um, you can also go to this key edit keybindings.json file. I'm gonna do that. And then I can put new key bind, you can see that's where they all, all of these keys are here. And I guess I can put my new one here. And command B will use this beautify. And by the way, I think Visual Studio Code something comes with its own beautification. This is an extra plugin that does more stuff. So hopefully now if I close this and close this and close this and close this, and now I'm gonna hit Command B. No! Oh, Command Hooker QR Beautify not found. What did I do wrong? Reload, let's try reload. Okay, now it's enabled. For some reason this reload thing, I never figured that out, but let's try hitting Command B again. Yay! Oh, what? No, no, no. That can't possibly be it. What's going on? Oh, there's errors in the code. Well, see, this is why you want to, I need another buzzer sound. This is why you want to use Beautify because it didn't do it correctly because, oh, sorry, I made all sorts of weird things. First of all, there needs to be an open curly bracket here. And by the way, in, in, in P5, the function name is create canvas. And now if I hit command B, I'm gonna stop with the silly drum thing. There we go. So there we go, now, Beautify works. Now there is a way to get it to work on save. Because I really like to do that. So in other words, just every time I hit save, it beautifies the code. 
Let's go back to the um, beautify and let's see. Um, let's see, on save. <laughs> I actually don't know. Like beautify will say, ah, beautify on save will be enabled when editor format on save is true. Okay, so I have to go back to the extension settings. <laughs> this is a tutorial about Visual Studio Code for somebody who doesn't really know how to use this, but this is good that I'm learning this. Um, and then I want to go to extensions, um, beautify config, edit and settings.json. Here we go. Um, which is, this is actually the right place to put it. Uh, true. So this should do that. So now save, there we go. Now the truth of the matter is it didn't actually do everything maybe I wanted it to do. Like maybe I would have preferred it got rid of a lot of white space, but this is all configurable, I'm sure. Okay, so what have I really, yeah, I barely scratched the surface here, but I'm using Visual Studio Code to edit text. I'm sure there's a P5 extension that I can use to know about the P5 functions. I'm using the Beautify plugin, but for extension, sorry, to Beautify, but I'm really just trying to show you about extensions. And I'm also able to launch it from Terminal. So the next thing that I need to do is look at, so we've kind of covered this, how I want to have console access, how I want to access the shell to be able to run node commands to start up servers, to train, to set up a virtual environment for Python, for anything that I want to do via shell access. So that's what I'm going to do next.